What's up, everybody? This is Alex from WMD back at you again. This time we are taking a look at the Crucible in depth. So I've done the development video where we showed off a couple of the ex, uh, extended parameters as well as the input. And you know we've done some videos um, in the past at you know Synthplex. We did a Synthtopia video and a couple things like that. But we haven't done the in depth you know how to use this thing kind of video. And um, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to run through each of the parameters and uh, all the inputs and uh, the switch and just kind of like go through everything that Crucible is and does. So Crucible is a synthesizer at heart. It is a digital synthesizer that synthesizes cymbal and like curved metal sounds. So basically we're trying to make sounds that are realistic cymbal sounds all the way to the experimental kind of crazy weird, weird realm of um, metallic sheet metal industrial kind of sounds that you might hear um, you know just from like taking a sheet metal piece of sheet metal and hitting it with a hammer or something like that so uh, one other one other quick note you'll notice that these two crucibles are black unlike the rest of our modules this is our new panel process so we will be doing this for all WMD modules moving forward this is black anodized aluminum with uh, engraved artwork and lettering so we're super pumped about that all right, so that's enough. Let's uh, let's just dive into this thing. All right, so you can see that I've got the output plugged into my mixer over here, and now I'm just going to hit the button on the top, and this is going to give us our kind of cymbal sound. I have the model switch all the way to the left, and I'm just going to run you through the knobs real quick. So the size knob is basically the size of the you know digital cymbal model. So. Um, Further to the right, so further clockwise, the symbol is larger. If we go all the way to the left, you can hear it get a lot more tight. And as I turn the knob, you can hear it like I'm actually like physically stretching the metal. You can kind of hear it like bend. So over to the left, we've got a more small, smaller model. And over on the right, you can hear it kind of shimmer a bit more. and waver a little bit more like a cymbal would, right? Pitch is just the overall pitch of the cymbal, so we can go from a relatively low pitch all the way up to here. And so with pitch and size, you can kind of dial in the cymbal sound that you're looking for to make like a ride sound. It's kind of what we're going for right now, right? So as you can hear, like as I'm turning the knobs, you know, it doesn't sound super realistic anymore because, you know, you can't actually do this in real time. But it is a pretty cool effect. So you can modulate these with CV if you'd like and make some pretty cool sounds. Decay is the next knob we're going to go through. This is just the decay over the volume of the cymbal, basically, right? So we can go from a really quick hit to a super long, big cymbal. So again, the three of these is kind of your bass cymbal sound. And decay isn't just a VCA over the sound. It's actually a combination of a lot of things, including like the feedback and, you know, just the settings of the delay lines to make the uh, overall cymbal model. So you can hear when we're over longer, you get this kind of like wavery kind of sound, especially when the size is big. Right, so with the, with the uh, knob all the way to the right on the decay, you can just make a huge symbol that just goes forever. All right, so tone knob is kind of like a filter. It has the same effect as like a tone knob on a guitar pedal, right? So to the left, counterclockwise, it's a little bit more of a muffled sound. And as we turn it to the right, we allow a lot more of those high frequencies through. So I kind of like to think of tone as almost like the room or the microphone you're using to record the cymbal, you know, or like the kind of sampler you're using or whatever you think magic is, this is kind of that tone. Like if you have magic microphones or magic uh, samplers, this kind of helps you dial in that tone. 
All right, so the Excite knob is basically like one of the parameters that we built this whole symbol around. One of the things we really wanted to be able to do was kind of change the style of stick you're using. So all the way to the left or counterclockwise, you can hear we've got a real high pitch attack. And as I turn it to the right, it gets darker and darker. So on the counterclockwise side, we're kind of uh, modeling a nylon or plastic tip stick. Real hard sounding, real um, just quick attack. And then as we turn the knob, we get more to like a wood tip kind of sound here. So just a little bit softer. Drummers will know what I'm talking about. You know, there's a huge thing with what kind of stick you're using. And if you're using a nylon tip versus a wood stick, it really has a difference. And then as we get further and further, we're actually changing the angle that the stick hits the cymbal. So, so when we go all the way to the right, we're actually changing the angle that the stick is hitting the cymbal. So when we're up in this range, we're actually hitting it with the tip of the sim the symbol with the tip of the stick, right? But as we go here, we're starting to angle the stick down and hit it with the edge of the stick. So this is the same thing a drummer would do when they're trying to crash a ride, right? They hit the crash or they hit the symbol on the side of it, and that sends the energy through the symbol, making it sound a lot more crashy. And then the deform knob is essentially the thinness of the symbol. So how thin your symbol is, how thick or how thin. So all the way to the left or all the way counterclockwise, we've got a real thick symbol. But as we turn this knob, the symbol starts to thin out, meaning that when you hit it, it's going to deform more, causing more harsh waveforms to come off of it, which gives you more of that crashy kind of sound. So this is what we, in development, we were just calling this parameter crashiness for the longest time. And when you get that all the way to the right, and you hit that exciter all the way to the right, you're starting to really crash that symbol. So now we can dial in what kind of crash we're using. We can make a really big one by turning the size up and the pitch down. Right? Maybe mess with our decay a little bit. Or we can make a super fast crash. Almost like a splash kind of thing, right? <laughs> There's your total little splash symbol. Every dad rock band has a splash symbol, right? And then we can get into this weird kind of territory up here too. Right? All right, so let's go back to the ride sound. The one thing I haven't really done yet is this like little cowbell kind of sound. So with the decay down and the size down, you know, you can actually make a pretty cool little like wood block kind of cowbell sound. And then you just, uh, you know, uh, modulate the decay and then you've got something like... All right, moving forward. So the model switch is basically what kind of symbol you are using. So all the way to the left, this is a normal symbol. Um, again, you can change up if you're using a big ride or a crash or what kind of like symbol in the domain you're using with all the knobs. But the model switch is uh, t has a little bit more of a drastic kind of sound to it. So when we switch the switch to the middle, this is the broken symbol mode. So this is more of like your riveted kind of sound or a symbol that has cracks in it. So you'll hear it as I hit it in the decay, you'll hear that it's just kind of sizzling. And this is this effect is pretty cool. It's um, definitely a little bit more of a jazzy kind of sound, but you know it's just a little bit more of an experimental way to use these same cymbal sounds and just get a little bit more texture in the background.
And now all the way to the right, this is what we call potato chip mode because the uh, the graphic kind of looks like a potato chip. We also call it sheet metal mode. Sheet metal mode. Um, so this is actually the same symbol model as the first one, but we removed the hole in the center. Um, so you know a symbol comes up like this, and you have a bell, and then you have a hole. When we removed that hole in the digital model, it actually changed a bunch of stuff, and we didn't really expect it to have this much effect. But now you can hear that it sounds a lot more like just like a big flat piece of sheet metal. Turn the deform and excite down. And then this is the one that we extended the parameters on. So you can get really low, kind of crazy crash sounds. And you can also take it up to this like super tight metal sound. So one of the things about this mode is it is truly experimental. There are ways to make it kind of freak out and get super noisy. So you can kind of get this one to seriously like lash out. So as far as you noise musicians go, this might be a symbol, this might be a uh, Eurorack module for you. All right, so let's go through the inputs really fast. I haven't even, you know, we've just been hitting the button. So I'm just gonna go out of output one here on my Metron and we'll run it here. And we'll just run quarter notes out here. And I was not on the right track group, so here we go. We'll go back to the symbol mode. We'll just make ourselves a nice little ride here. All right, so the edge of the so the edge input is basically like you are hitting the edge of the symbol. You have a big round thing, you're hitting it right here. So the mid input is almost like you're hitting a little bit more on the inside of the bow of the symbol. So we'll hear the differences. So you're kind of modulating between like here and here, right? Boom, bam, boom, bam, boom, bam. And then if you send it two gates at the same time into both of these inputs, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. So if you, and now if you send uh, two gates at the same time, you get the bell sound. So this is actually the side of the stick hitting the bell. So you can hear just with two different gate patterns, we're getting three different sounds. So you can get really rhythmic real quick. There's also a choke input here. And so we can send triggers or gates into choke and actually grab the outside of the symbol. So you'll hear it with uh, triggers, it's a real short just kind of pinch, right? If I do more in a row, it's like I'm pinching it real quick. But if I move into gates and I use like a 50% gate, you'll hear it like I just grabbed onto it, right? And if I use a 100% gate, it'll completely cut everything off. So that's another fun way to just like uh, modulate stuff and get a different kind of sound. So we also have a velocity input here. So I'm gonna clock my mod box. Just try and get like a match thing here. And then I'm gonna take the sample and hold out. I'm syncing to the same tempo. And I'm gonna run that into the velocity input. And so you can hear this is pretty drastic. I mean, I might need to uh, decide what kind of voltage I'm using into this guy, but you can hear now I'm hitting the cymbal harder and softer depending on the sample and hold. So modulating this parameter with some sort of step sequencer might be a good idea if you're going for like a real um, dynamic kind of sound. All 
All right, so just like most of our modules, any of these parameters can be uh, changed or modulated with control voltage. So each one of these knobs has its own input as well as the velocity input. The model, that's uh, you have to switch that by hand. There is no CV input for that guy. All right, and so the last thing uh, about Crucible is something I've shown in a previous video, but this is the input. So this is basically the resonator input. So you can run any kind of sound into Crucible and uh, get and use it kind of like a resonator or a reverb. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to run an oscillator through it. So we'll just do like a saw wave. Ooh, -hoo. ooh, -hoo. real loud. Turn it down a little bit. And actually, why don't we filter this guy? Because that's that way we can make like different sounds here. So all five of these knobs still have an effect on the sound. The exciter knob has no effect because we're not we're no longer using the exciter. We can, however, use both the exciter and the input at the same time. And as you can tell, the deform goes real crazy real quick. Because we're essentially running a speaker on top of a cymbal. So if you think about doing that with something physical, I mean, if you've got a real thin cymbal, it's going to just go out of control super fast. So again, noise musicians it might be a really great tool for that. And just get super wild real quick. We can also switch the models here. getting kind of that weird broken sound here. And then in this experimental mode. It's actually a pretty good sounding reverb. Get into that D, D form. We can get super horror movie vibes on this. All right, so that's Crucible, the in-depth demo. So um, we'll be doing a lot more videos with it, you know, in the mix and uh, kind of like showing you what it sounds like. Uh, when you're playing with a bunch of other stuff, check out our Instagram at WM Devices. Um, that's where we show most of that stuff. And yeah, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching these videos and uh, checking out Crucible. And uh, this thing should be available very, very soon. So thank you guys again, and we'll see you next time.